Hey everybody, welcome to Mammoth Interactive's YouTube channel. First of all, I want to thank you for watching this video. And remember that this channel doesn't do Patreon, instead we sell our digital courses down below. And every single dollar that we get from the products you buy below goes into making more content. The best way to help out this channel and Mammoth Interactive is to subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. Get thousands of hours and hundreds of courses for a low, low price down below. We have a monthly option and and a yearly option. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in the video. Hey everyone, welcome to the Premiere Pro course. And for this section of the course, we are going to talk about how you can navigate the workspace and layout in Premiere Pro. Now, Premiere Pro is a very good software. If you want to learn a little bit more about uh, video editing and how you can go ahead and create amazing videos, you should absolutely learn Premiere Pro. It's a uh, video editing software that is provided to you by Adobe. And I feel that Premiere Pro is far more superior than any software out there. And it's just my uh, thought on this. I'm not saying that any other software cannot be better than this. I just prefer Premiere Pro because I have a specific workflow and I have been working with Premiere Pro for a number of years now. I did start uh, on <laughs> learning on the Windows uh, Movie Maker and then I progressed through the Sony Vegas Pro and then I came to Premiere Pro. Now, Premiere Pro basically it's for uh, professionals and it's for people who really want to get into the crux of video editing and it, ha it gives you a lot of control over everything and that is why I like Premiere Pro personally. I have worked with other editing softwares as well. I have worked with Final Cut Pro as well as uh, Sony Vegas Pro. But I feel that Premiere Pro, again, it's it's your choice. If you want to learn Premiere Pro, it's up to you. And if you want to work with any other software out there, you can work with them. Now, let's talk a little bit about how you can go ahead and navigate the workspace and layout in Premiere Pro. Now, whenever you open a Premiere Pro project, as you see right over here, something like this will appear. Now. To create a new project, you can just click over here and click on new project or go to file and click on new project right over here. I'm going to click right over here or you can press Ctrl Alt N on your keyboard and this will also create a new project for you. And if you are on a Mac, you can press Ctrl or Command Option N and this will create a new project for you. Now, whenever you create a new project, something like this pops up right over here. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, the render engine and where you want to save these files to. Now by default, my files have, uh, have been saving right over here in my Premiere Pro folder. So I'm not going to touch that for now, but I'm going to rename this as workspace and layout. And that is about it. Now let's talk a little bit about render engines in Premiere Pro. Now Premiere Pro works with two types of render engines. One of them is the GPU acceleration uh, render engine and the other one is the Mercury uh, software engine right over here. Now what these do, the main difference between these two is this only uses the uh, computer software to play back your videos and this one uses your external GPU. Now for better performance, I would recommend you to go with the uh, GPU acceleration. For some reason, if you don't have a GPU in your computer right over here or your laptop and it doesn't come with the GPU, just go ahead and work with uh, the software only uh, version that we have right over here. The encoding times and the rendering times are just, they're just so slow with the uh, software only version right over here. I think there is also another option right over here. If you are on a Mac, uh, you will see another option that is metal. I think that is better for you if you're on a Mac. But for now, uh, at least for my computer, I will choose the CUDA uh, GPU acceleration system right over here. I can press OK and this will create a new project for me. Now, let's talk a little bit about different workspaces and layouts in Premiere Pro. So. We have all these panels right over here and these are the basic way in which you will interact with this software. Now, by default, we have this learning software right over here, this learning panel right over here. And this has all these things over here. First is our program menu right over here. Then we have our source menu right here and then a project uh, browser and a media browser and a timeline. And these are the different kinds of tools that you can work with in Premiere Pro. Towards the left, as you can see right over here, we have uh, some tutorials that you can work with in Premiere Pro. Now, for now, we're not going to work on this one right over here. We are going to work on the editing workspace right here. So you can click right over here and click on editing. 
and this will bring you to this panel or this saved layout over here. I'm going to go ahead and reset it to how it came with Premiere Pro. I do not remember if this is it, uh, but let's go ahead and reset it to the saved layout. So to do that, you can click on these three bars right here and click on reset to saved layout and it will reset everything to how it came in as default. Now, these are also, you can see there are a lot of different kinds of panels right over here. If I click these two uh, arrows right here, you can see these uh, different workspaces right here. But let's talk a little bit about what you will be working with and how you will be working with them. Now, first we over here, we have our source panel right here. So the basic thing about source panel is, let's say I import a video file right over here, which I will show you how you can go ahead and do that. That will be your source in this sequence. Now, for now, we don't have any sequence because we have not created a new sequence and we will learn how to create a new sequence. But sequence is the basic way you interact with Premiere Pro. It's the basic way you can create new projects in Premiere Pro and you can create a bunch of sequences in just one project. Let's say you're working for a client and they want you to edit different versions of the same video. So what you can go ahead and do is create new sequences and that will help you out in keeping everything organized to a sim uh, same project. If I'm working for a client, I can just create new sequences and we can work on those. Again, we'll talk a little bit about sequences later in this video. First of all, we have our source pan right over here. The next one we have is our effect controls panel. Now what this does is it gives you a lot of options on how you can move your footage or animate different parts of your footage right over here. The next we have is the audio clip mixer. We can mix different kinds of audios uh, using this panel right over here. And this one is the metadata. Now metadata is basically the basic data that we have over about a file. Towards the right of uh, this panel right over here, we have the program panel. And the program panel basically shows you the output of your timeline or the output of your edits in a Premiere Pro project. The next panel that we have towards the bottom of our program panel right over here is our timeline. Now the timeline is the basic way you can interact with uh, videos in Premiere Pro. You will drop everything in your timeline. You can cut videos and you can work with videos in your timeline right here. Towards the left, we have all these different kinds of windows right over here. So the first one is the project window where you will have every video that you have or every clip that you have imported in your project right here. The next one is the media browser. You can just go ahead and browse different kinds of folders and uh, your local disks right over here. And you can browse and see the video files that you have right here. The next one is Adobe libraries. Now for this one, you need to have a creative cloud uh, subscription for this one uh, and it will be a very big deal if you have that because they provide you with a lot of things they will provide you with different kinds of fonts and uh, videos and clips and everything so i do recommend you to go ahead and uh, get adobe creative cloud the next one that we have right over here is the info panel. This will give you information about different kinds of uh, things about the video file, like the duration, the size of the video and all that good stuff. The next panel that we have right over here is the effects panel. Now this will have different kinds of effects right over here. Let's say I search color and we have different kinds of effects right over here. Now. Let's move on to the next one. The next one is the markers panel. You can, uh, we will talk a little bit about how you can put markers in your timeline right over here in this course. And what these do is they really help you out in learning a little bit about uh, how, where you can cut different things or let's say you have an edit and you want to review something. You can put down a marker on your timeline right here and then that will help you out to go back to that marker later. The next one is the history panel. The history panel shows you different kinds of uh, things that you did with this project right now. Well, that's about it for the workspace and layouts. We have different kinds of workspaces right over here. The next one that we have is the color uh, workspace and the color workspace. What it does is, is it helps you to color grade your footage and to provide uh, and to apply different kinds of LUTs to your footage. We will talk a little bit about LUTs in a future video. The next one is the effects menu effects uh, workspace that we have right over here. This one tends to take a little bit of time and you have all these kinds of different effects right over here. Now for most of this course, we will be working on your editing uh, panel right over here. We will learn how to customize uh, your panel and how you can customize 
uh, these different kinds of panels that we have right over here and how you can move these panels and how you can adjust it towards your screen size. You can go through all these different kinds of workspaces that we have right over here uh, by clicking on these two uh, arrows and you can go through all of them and learn what all of these do but for now we'll just stick to the editing workspace right over here. Well, that's it for this one guys. I hope to see you in the next video where we will learn a little bit about uh, pre-made layouts and how you can adjust panel sizes in Premiere Pro. Well, that's it for me. Bye bye. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Premiere Pro course. And for this section of the course, we are gonna learn a little bit about these pre-made layouts that we have in Premiere Pro. Now we did discuss a little bit about them in our previous video, but we will look uh, into the different kinds of layouts and different kinds of panels each of uh, them have. So the first one that we have right over here whenever you open Premiere Pro is your learn uh, or your learning panel right over here. Now this is a pre-made uh, layout by Premiere Pro uh, by Adobe and you can work through and learn different kinds of tutorials available. We have different kinds of tutorials, the basics uh, tutorial and you can learn skills and edits and it's a very uh, nice touch by Adobe that they let you do all this by just uh, downloading the software. You can get free resources from Adobe, you can just go ahead and watch all the videos by their amazing uh, tutors and you can learn little tricks and tips from uh, Adobe and how you can go ahead and edit your different kinds of videos. The next one is our assembly panel. And for this panel, it's basically for assembling the video right over here. When you import video files right here, what you can go ahead and do, first of all, to uh, import any video file, you can just click over here, double click right here. And let's say I import some video files right over here. Let's say I import these two files right here. What this lets you do is this uh, assembling panel right over here. What it lets you do is it lets you drag these videos into your timeline as, and assemble, assemble a basic storyline for the video you're creating. Now this is very important because when you are working uh, for continuously on a video or on a project that we have right here, what you want to do is assemble a basic outline and then remove things as you go. And this uh, panel right over here is good for that. It was specifically made by Adobe for this function only and you can go ahead and assemble your project right over here and then you can go ahead and fine tune all those little uh, levels right there and work till you're happy. The next one is our editing workspace right over here. And you might also notice that all these uh, panels, the first three panels at least, are in a chronological order. First you assemble your footage, then you start editing, then you go ahead and color grade it and much more. So the next one, the next panel that we have right over here is our editing panel. And what the editing panel is for basically fine tuning everything. It will help you go ahead and animate everything. It will help you go uh, to remove little uh, parts of a video that you don't want. And this one is the one you will be working on mostly. I do recommend you to only work with the editing panel from now on. These panels might scare you a little bit because there are a lot of steps. But personally, as an editor, I use the editing panel the most. And after that, I do use color correction a, li uh, a little bit. But if I'm working on a professional project with a client, I do tend to use the Vinci Resolve. Now, the next panel that we have right over here is your color panel right there. And this panel is just so that you can go ahead and color grade your footage. Now, color grading is basically adding a specific uh, color shade to a video so that you can tell a story in a better way. If let's say the video is uh, a little bit color graded towards the yellows and red, it seems that the video is warm. While if the video is colored graded towards the blues and uh, magentas, the video looks like it was, uh, it's, it looks like a cold video and the hue of the video is a little bit cold. The next we have is our effects panel right over here. Now you can use this specific layout right here to apply different kinds of effects to your video right there. And the top thing that we have right over here on the right is our effects panel right there. And you can go through all these panels. We have essential graphics, which will help you go ahead and put motion graphics or pre-made motion graphics in your footage right there. The next one that we have is the audio panel right here. Now working with audio in Premiere Pro is quite an easy task. If you are on the editing workspace, it might seem a little off to you, but it's again, it's a very easy thing. 
you have the essential sound panel right over here but it won't show up right now because we don't have any video files right here but once we do we can go ahead and see the different kinds of uh, dialogues music and ambient sounds that are there in uh, premiere pro the next one is your graphics pre-made layout now what this pre-made layout does is it provides you an essential graphics uh, panel towards the right of your project window right here and you have all these different kinds of pre-made uh, projects that we have right here as you can see this is let's say this is, you want to import this to your file you can just click and drag right over here into your timeline and this will add it right there now since we have not made a sequence or we have not done anything in this matter right over here by editing any video it might not work so if you create a new sequence and you just want to look at it you can just go ahead and drag right over here and this will be imported in your footage right there the next one is your libraries panel now this what will uh, this do is it gives you the adobe libraries uh, panel right over here i have logged out of my creative cloud account but this will give you a lot of options on how you can work with uh, libraries from Adobe. The next one is all panels. This will display each and every panel in After Effects in Premiere Pro, and there are a lot of them. Your program might crash because of this, but because Premiere Pro is basically for professionals, you will have a lot of panels right over here. You can see that there are so many different kinds of panels and so many different kinds of things that you can go ahead and do in Premiere Pro. The next one that we have right over here is meta logging. Now what basically meta logging is, is adding information about a specific video right over here. And you can add meta logs right over here. The next one is the production uh, preset that we have right over here. And again, this, you will barely use this uh, one right over here. I once worked on this, I think it was for a client right over here. We did edit in a Teams project and we did use the production one, just like, I think it was once. But mostly you will be working with the editing panel right over here. Now, let's talk a little bit about what you can do if you want a specific window right over here. So you can go to window and add any sort of window that you want right over here. We will talk a little bit about how you can add different kinds of panels and windows in Premiere Pro and how you can go ahead and uh, create a new workspace with it and how you can personalize your workspace in Premiere Pro. Now, I will show you my personal uh, choice for this one, but since I reset everything with Premiere Pro, I can't show you right now, but I will show you the setup that I like because some of these panels for you, they might not be uh, really useful because let's say you don't want the media browser panel right over here because you can just go ahead and import your videos right over here you may not want the audio clips mixer for now because you're not working on a file with audio so some these some of these uh, panels need to be tweaked a little bit so that you can go ahead and work with premiere pro well that's about it for this one guys i hope to see you in the next video where we will learn a little bit about how you can go ahead and adjust panel size in premiere pro well, that's about it for this one, guys. See you in that one. Bye-bye. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Premiere Pro course. And for this section of the course, we are going to talk about adjusting panel size in Premiere Pro and how you can go ahead and, uh, you know, customize everything in Premiere Pro. Now, First, let's talk what are panels. So a basic panel in Premiere Pro is any window that you see right over here. So in this uh, whole workspace that we have, we have a lot of different kinds of panels. The first panel we have is a program or a panel right over here towards the top right. The next panel that we have is the timeline. Again, timeline is a panel or a window in workspace, basically a window that pops up in your workspace in Premiere Pro. Now, uh, you can also have many different kinds of panels in After Effects and many different kinds of panels in the same uh, panel right over here. As you can see, we have a drop down menu right over here of the different kinds of panels that we have in Premiere Pro. The next one, you can see that we have our source panel right over here, our effects control panel, our audio clip mixer panel and our metadata panel. So basically panels are your main way in which you can customize your workspace in Premiere Pro. You can move around these panels now. It's a very easy task to move around these panels. The first thing that you want to do is hover your mouse on this black line that we have right over here. Now what this black line is, is basically it's the divider between this panel 
on the right the program panel and the source panel right over here and you can go ahead and adjust the size between these two panels by hovering over this black line and this pops up this tool right over here you can click and drag and this will increase or decrease the size of a panel and as you can see you can just decrease the size of my program panel right over here and increase the size of my source uh, panel right there or you can decrease the size of your source clip panel and have your program panel a little bigger you can do this with different kinds of panels right over here let's say i want to see a little bit more of a timeline as you would want to because if you uh, as you work on complex projects and as you work with more and more and more clients and as you create your own videos the timelines will get messy and we will talk a little bit about how you can go ahead and uh, neaten everything out and create timelines that won't confuse you while you're going ahead and doing more edits so to do that we can just hover over this uh, black bar right over here and we can just click and drag and this will increase and decrease the size of any uh, panel that you want in Premiere Pro. Again with the same with the tool panel you can just click and drag and this will drag the tool panel like this. Now you can just customize this to however you want generally what I would recommend is to keep your program panel right over here or your output panel a little a little uh, smaller than your source clip panel when you are just putting videos in your timeline when you are actually going ahead and editing videos towards the final result i would recommend to have it a little bit bigger just about this one and that's that's about it because uh, whenever you're working with videos you want to see what the video is uh, doing and what edits you have made so i would recommend to you if you are just putting videos ahead in your timeline increase the size of your source panel and once that is done and you're just going ahead to fine tune every little knob in your video what you can go ahead and do is just increase the program uh, sequence panel right over here now most people they increase the size of their project panel right there but i don't really have the need to do that because there are different kinds of views in your uh, pro uh, project panel right there we will talk about the different kinds of views that we have right here in a future video but i don't really feel the need that you need to have a very big uh, project panel that we have right here so that's it for this one guys i hope you like this one in the next video we will learn how you can move and dock panels in premiere pro now that is a very quick video and we will learn how you can you know personalize your own workspace in premiere pro well this is it for this one guys i hope to see you in the next one bye bye Hey everyone, welcome back to the Premiere Pro course and for this section of the course we are going to learn a little bit about how you can move different kinds of panels in Premiere Pro. Now, as we talked about in the previous video, we have all these panels in Premiere Pro but you can customize this layout by moving these panels here and there. So let's say I want to move my source panel to, with my uh, program panel right over here. I'm going to increase the size. We did talk about how you can increase the size of these panels. Just hover over these black lines right here and click and drag and this will increase the size of a panel right here. Now towards the top right we have our program panel and towards the top left we have our source panel right over here. So what you can go ahead and do to move a panel is click and drag on the name of that panel and this will bring up drop zones. Now drop zones are basically zones in which you can drop your panel right over here and it will give you a result of attaching that panel to the specific place that you want. Now this might seem a little tough to you but I will teach you how you can go ahead and do that. <coughs> Sorry for that. So the first thing that you can go ahead and do is you can just drop your panel right over here towards this big rectangle box that we have. Now what this will do is when I uh, let go of my mouse button, it will have a new window towards the top. Now we have two uh, windows right over here towards the top of this panel right over here and I can switch between by clicking on these panels right here. Now another thing that you can go ahead and do is click it or uh, drag your mouse, click and drag it towards this uh, rectangular shape right over here towards the uh, top left. What you can go ahead and do is if you release your mouse button right over here this will create a new panel by dividing our original panel so let's see how that looks again we have our project or the program panel right over here i click and drag and what 
uh, I will do is I will drag this over on this uh, rectangle piece right over here. And once I let go of my mouse, it will divide this whole uh, program sequence right over here into half. So as you can see, we have divided it into half and this is how everything looks like. Now let's go back to how everything was and let's see what happens if I do it towards the top. If I do it towards this uh, shape right over here, what this will do is it will divide it vertically like this. So let's go ahead and see. And as you can see, we have two different kinds of panels right over here and this divided it into half. Let's go back to how it was. And if I do it towards the right, again, as you guessed, the panel will move towards the right and this will be divided in half. As you can see, that is how that one works. The next one is towards the bottom. Again, it's the same thing will happen, but the source panel will move towards the bottom. Always remember that whenever you're doing this, the panel that you're selecting and dragging and dropping towards, that is where that panel will be. If I drop it towards the left, it is where my source panel will be. If I drop it towards the bottom, it is where my source panel will be. Now, there is also another option right over here where we have this uh, big rectangle bar over here. Now let's drop it right here. And as you can see, we have this big rectangular bar right here. Now what this does is it does the same thing as having two panels in one uh, big panel right over here. Well, that's about it. That is how you can go ahead and move panels in Premiere Pro. Now moving panels is really, it's just a way to customize everything. For me, I don't like certain panels in Premiere Pro, but uh, that's about it. Also, you can go ahead and remove and undock panels. Let's learn how you can go ahead and do that before we end this video. So what you can go ahead and do, let's say I have the source panel right over here. I can click on these three lines and I can close this panel or undock this panel. We're just going to go ahead and talk about these two. So as you guessed, the closing panel, if we close this, the panel disappears from our workspace right over here. Let's bring our effect controls panel right here. And if I go ahead and click on these three lines over here and I click on undock this panel, this will help me to move this panel freely. And this will give me this outer shadow out, uh, right over here, which I can go ahead and then adjust my panel with. Now, if you are someone who has two monitors or multiple monitors, what you can go ahead and do or what I do, uh, I do have two monitors with me right over here. What I go ahead and do is I move my uh, program panel right over here, this one behind my effects and controls panel. I move it towards a different monitor. So whenever I'm editing, I can just focus on my timeline right over here. I can adjust this timeline size right there. And I have a much bigger area in which I can work, my, uh, work with my timeline. I will just undock this panel right over here and increase the size and put it towards my next screen or the other screen that I have. This helps you out uh, a lot because you can just concentrate on your timeline right over here and you don't really have to worry about seeing uh, a little bit of the video right over here. You get a much bigger output and that is just how I work. You might have different, uh, you know, areas of interest and you might have different thoughts about this. But personally, I just move some of my panels to a different monitor and I also remove some of the panels right over here. Now let's go ahead and reset this uh, layout right over here. I can click on these three dots in the editing panel and click on reset to saved layout. And this will reset everything. So that's about it for this one, guys. I hope to see you in the next video where we will learn how you can go ahead and maximize panels and add panels to the interface of Premiere Pro. So I hope to see you in that one. And till then, bye bye. Hey everyone, welcome back to the After Effects course and for this quick session, we are going to learn how you can go ahead and maximize panel in Premiere Pro. Now, what maximize uh, panels does is it basically covers your whole workspace right over here by increasing the size of your panel that you're working on. Now, there are a lot of ways by which you can do this, but the easiest way according to me is by pressing the tight key over right over here and this will maximize your panel right here now you can just go ahead and drag this panel right over here and increase the size and do all this all this stuff right here but again everything is still covering your screen right here <clears throat> so you can click on reset to save layout i'm going to go ahead and do that <clears throat>
I'm really sorry, it's, uh, I have a little cold. But what you can go ahead and do to maximize any panel is press the tight key right over here. And what you can go ahead and do is increase the size of this panel to the whole full screen. Now this is very uh, helpful uh, if you are working with big projects and you want to see how the output is looking and you just have uh, a single monitor uh, as most people do. To have a look at the final video, you can just click on this one right over here or if you want to just have uh, the timeline towards uh, our panels right over here as the full screen, what I can go ahead and do is press this tight key right over here. And this key is uh, towards the left of your one number key and that is just how you can go ahead and maximize your panels in Premiere Pro. Now this was a very quick video I know but in the next video we are going to learn how you can go ahead and add panels to the Premiere Pro interface. Well that's about it for this one guys. I hope to see you in the next one and till then bye bye. Hey everyone, welcome back to the After Effects course and for this section of the course, we are going to learn about how you can go ahead and add panels to the uh, Premiere Pro interface right over here. Now, as you can see right here, we have a lot of different kinds of panels in Premiere Pro and we have uh, different kinds of panels that some of them you might not need as a beginner, but we have a lot of panels right over here. So most people won't be using these so let's just go ahead and remove some of them you can just click on these three buttons right here and close these panels uh, i don't use some of these panels and some of these are basically useless to you if you are a beginner in premiere pro i will just keep it to a very minimum and this is generally how my uh, setup looks like in premiere pro but let's say you want a specific window you want the essential graphics window in your Premiere Pro uh, interface that we have right over here. So what you can go ahead and do is click on window right over here and you can search for these different kinds of uh, panels that we have right here and you can add these panels in your Premiere Pro interface. Let's say I'm on the essential graphics uh, panel right here. It will pop up towards the right of all these panels and we have a panel right over here. Let's just go ahead and close this panel and add a uh, let's say Lumetri color panel and this will pop up the Lumetri color panel towards the right. Now this is a very useful tool because if you're just getting started in Premiere Pro you might not find different kinds of uh, panels right over here. So you can just go ahead and click on window and add any type of panel that we have right over here. The most useful panels that I feel are there for you uh, would be first of all these panels that are checked right over here except the Lumetri color as a beginner you won't be uh, color grading a lot but uh, for beginners right over here I do uh, suggest you to have the effects controls and effects panel right over here have this at all times because you might never know what kinds of effects that you want right here the next one is the media browser the media browser is a little bit uh, useless to me at least because what I tend to do is I pre-arrange and pre-organize my files but if you are a beginner I would suggest you to go ahead and have the media browser panel in your uh, Premiere Pro workspace right there. Now the next one if you are a beginner again you might want the learn panel and this is how the learn panel looks like I will just pop it towards the left of my panel right over here and you might want this panel at all times but Again, you're doing this course, I don't think you will really want this panel. And that's about it. Tools and timelines, just get these two panels right over here. As you can see, we have a shortcut towards the right of the name. So the shortcut for my audio track mixer window that we have right here is shift plus six. And I would always suggest you to have your timeline right over here. Don't mess with these panels a lot and don't remove your timeline because again, timeline is the basic way in which you will interact with uh, your videos right over here. The next panel is your time code panel. Now if you are working on a project where you are uh, you know uh, really concentrated on the, uh, the duration and uh, you know the in and out of a video in and out points of a video you might want this panel to hang around but I don't really use it all that much it just uh, shows the length of the video right over here on these two uh, numbers that we have right over here and that's about it that's about all the panels you will need you will need the essential graphics panel quite a lot because 
starting out in Premiere Pro, you will not be creating a lot of custom uh, animations or custom motion graphics. But so you would want to have uh, this essential graphics right, uh, panel right over here. It has different kinds of animations that we have right over here. You can view these different kinds of animations and you can have all these kinds of animations right over here. These have uh, lower third intros and outros and some weird kinds of animations, but you would want this panel at certain times. So just go ahead and uh, have that right over here. Again, essential sounds. I don't think most people will use essential sounds a lot because uh, people generally try to make their own sound effects or if they do want to add sound effects in uh, their project files right over here most people will go ahead and download them from an external source we will talk about uh, that in a future video when we are learning about where you can get uh, footage from and you can go ahead and have that essential panel right over here essential sound panel right over there well that's about it that's about all the panels that you would want in premiere pro as a beginner i would just suggest you to have these panels for now and as we move forward we can go ahead and add different kinds of panels in premiere pro well that's about it for this one guys i hope to see you in the next video and in the next video we are going to talk about how you can create a new workspace and we are going to be creating a new workspace for me i deleted all my workspaces right over here i had a few uh, that would help me out in my process right over here and i will show you the kind of workspace that i have in premiere pro well that's about it for this one guys i hope to see you in the next one until then bye bye hey everyone welcome back to the after effects course and for this section of the course we are going to talk about how you can create a new workspace in premiere pro so before we do that, let's go ahead and reset everything to the saved layout. Click on these three dots right over here and click on reset to saved layout. And this will reset everything to how it came in as default. Now, let's say I want to create a special workspace. Now, uh, I did have a lot of workspaces right over here, custom workspaces in my Premiere Pro project, but I deleted all those to show you how you can go ahead and learn from a basic Premiere Pro uh, version that we have right over here. Now, what I'll go ahead and do is, let's say I don't want some panels right over here. Some panels are distracting to me. So what I can go ahead and do is uh, click on, let's say I don't want the metadata panel right over here. I can click on these three dots, these three lines right over here, and I can click on close panel. I can go ahead and do the same for my audio clip mixer panel now, again, if you have worked with Premiere Pro, I'm pretty sure you will have a specific uh, workspace that you think you do like and that you work with. But since I don't, let's go ahead and delete some panels right over here. I'm going to close a bunch of panels right over here and let's go ahead and do that. And what I'm going to go ahead and do as well is I'm going to go ahead and add a few windows to my Premiere Pro panels right over here. I can click on window right over here. And what I can go ahead and do, let's say I want the captions panel right over here. And let's say I also want my, um, let's say I also want my progress panel somewhere. So we have added a few panels to our workspace right over here. What we can go ahead and do is create a new workspace from all these different panels that we have right over here. Now, before we do that, what I do want to warn you about is whenever you're clicking right over here never click as uh okay first let's create a new workspace and then i'll give you that warning right over here click on uh, these three dots right over here and click on save as a new workspace i'm going to name this workspace as a trial workspace and that's about it let's go ahead and uh, name it the trial workspace i can click ok and as you can see we have a new workspace right over here and this is my new trial workspace now let's say you want to keep a workspace for a very long time what i would suggest you to do is not click on save changes to this workspace now let's say i move these panels around i move these around in a very weird fashion and i move these around like this one now, if I go ahead and click on save changes to this workspace and what this will do is it will basically save this uh, workspace as 
we have it right over here you cannot go back to how you wanted it to be if i click on reset to save layout it won't do anything because we have saved it as a change to this new workspace i have made this mistake uh, before as well i had uh, a few workspaces right over here and i would move panels uh anywhere i wanted and i would just by mistake i just would click save changes to this workplace and all those panels and all those workspaces would go away now it's not a very big loss again it's not a very big thing if you do that you can just go ahead and create a new workspace but if you are comfortable with the workspace i would just recommend you to create new workspaces you can create as many workspaces as you want and you can go ahead and manage workspaces so this is our original editing workspace let's reset it to the saved one and you can manage these different kinds of workspaces that we have right here you can click on these two dots right over here and when you click on uh, these two these two arrows right over here i'm sorry this panel will these this drop down will pop up what you can go ahead and do is click on edit workspaces and you have these different kinds of workspaces that we have in after effects now uh, the first one again we talked about all these workspaces we just created our trial workspace right over here what i can go ahead and do is first of all delete this workspace and i'll press ok and once i press ok it will have deleted that workspace from uh, premiere pro you will never get that workspace back so let's go ahead and again look at this edit workspaces panel right over here now what you can go ahead and do is we have these two options right over here now what these two options do is the first one is your bar right over here which is this bar that is visible to you on the top of your panels right over here the next one is the overflow menu and the third one is the do not show menu now we don't have any on the do not show menu but let's say i don't want to see the learning uh, one right over here i can just click and drag and put it to do not show menu right over here let's go ahead and do that for all of these and what i can go ahead and do is click and drag and move these under my do not show menu right over here i can move all of them right there and what this will do is it will not show these panels right over here in any way or any form it will just show my editing panel right here now i can click ok and it has removed every other panel or every other workspace that we had and that is how it looks like i can again go ahead and click on edit workspaces and just go ahead and see all these different options that we have right over here and i can click and drag and uh, go ahead and move these let's say i want to have my assembly panel in my overflow menu my effects panel and my audio panel in my overflow menu i can click on ok and since we changed our bar menu right over here we have a color option the color grading uh, preset that we have with after effects the editing preset and the learning preset i can also go ahead and click on this uh, these two arrows right over here and i can see that these three panels these three uh, workspaces that we have right over here are in the overflow menu also uh, let's say you can go ahead and arrange these as well the first one you might have a different kind of a uh, workflow in your mind let's say the first thing that you do is uh, color grading that is a weird thing to say but let's say the first thing that you want to do is color grade the footage and then edit it you can have these in a specific order that you want and once you press ok you will have all of them in a specific order well that's about this uh, it for this one guys we learned how you can create a new workspace and how you can edit different kinds of workspaces in after effects in the next video we are going to learn how you can go ahead and import and organize files in premiere pro i'm going to show you how you can go ahead and import different kinds of files in premiere pro and uh, with that i'm going to show you one method that i think is really helpful uh, to most newcomers in premiere pro and we will learn how you can go ahead and do that well that's it for this one guys i hope to see you in the next one until then bye bye hey everyone welcome back to the premiere pro course and for this section of the course we are going to learn a little bit about how you can go ahead and import files in premiere pro and how you can go ahead and organize files now i won't be going into how you can organize everything in uh, just this video we are going to learn a little bit about organizing files in premiere pro and how you can use different kinds of functions in premiere pro to organize files but for this one i will tell you a little bit about uh, working with labels now 
w- uh, let's talk a little bit about how you can go ahead and import these files and then we can go ahead and talk about how you can go ahead and use labels on these files now uh, i will click on uh, either there are different kinds of ways by which you can import uh, video files in premiere pro you can either double click right over here in our project window or you can click on file and click on import right over here or you can click on uh, or you can press control i on your windows system or command i if you're on a mac and this will help you to import files in premiere pro now let's just import these four video files that we have right over here i will have these files in uh, premiere pro and i will give uh, you these files and uh, i will show you where you can download these files right over here now we have now uh, imported these four files right over here let's talk a little bit about our project window right over here i'm going to sh- uh, click on my tilt key right over here and this will bring my uh, window to a full maximum view that we have right here now as you can see you can see the thumbnails of this video and if i click uh, if i hover over and you know move my uh, mouse from the left towards the right you can see what is in in this video i can do the same for this one right over here and as you can see it's right over here again i can do the same for this one right here again you can do this for every video that you have what you can go ahead and do now is what i prefer to do at least is first of all rename these videos so i'm going to go ahead and rename these videos right over here uh, let's go ahead and go back to the maximum view right click on these videos and you can click on rename right over here i'm going to rename this to one and let's just go ahead and do that to every video that we have right over here and you can just press uh, enter on your keyboard and this will give you the second uh, vid- or the third video that we have right over here and you can rename this press enter and this will bring you to the fourth video now we have these four videos that we have right over here again i will show you uh, where you can get these videos or where i got these videos and different sites where you can get these kind of uh, videos that we have right here but what i prefer to do with my organizing these footage uh, is the first thing that i'll go ahead and do is i'll click on this button right over here towards the bottom right and what this does is it provides you these uh, small frames that we have right over here now if you want to see your video files in this big format again go ahead and keep it but what i do is i would uh, give it this list view that we have right over here now why i like the list view for any video that we have right here is you can see first of all you can just see the names the frame rate and every single data about these clips that we have right over here now let's go ahead and learn a little bit about labels in this uh, in these uh, in this whole organizing thing that we have right over here now to organize your files there are two things that you can go ahead and do you can create different bins and put your files in bins and we will talk about how you can go ahead and do that in a future video but for now let's go ahead and learn how you can label these videos now as you can see already we have these boxes right over here right we have these boxes right over here with different colors the first uh, two are the same and the last one is the same but this one is a different color and this is because this file as you can see right over here by this icon right here the first two files and the last file is just a video file there is no audio attached to that file but for our third file right over here you have this green waveform icon right here and this means that there is audio attached to this file and so what premiere does is it automatically goes ahead and changes the color to this file now let's say you're working with a complex timeline it's a very good idea for you to go ahead and label each video now what you can go ahead and do with labeling is you have uh, let's say our timeline right over here i'll go ahead and drag my footage right in my timeline and this has created my first sequence let's go ahead and talk about the first sequence now since i did not create a new sequence by uh, going to the sequence menu it will create a new sequence by the name of the clip that i dragged in right over here now you can see that the sequence is denoted by this different icon and this different label color that we have right over here now let's say you're working with a big timeline it really helps you out if you have different colors for everything let's see i will just drop this one right over here and let's i can go ahead and delete my audio file right there and now you can see that we have different colors for our video files i would recommend you to go ahead and use different channels of this video rack right over here for different video files because again let's say you want to apply a, a effect 
uh, to all the videos or all the same videos that we have right over here you can just have them color coded and you can go ahead and apply those effects to all those videos let's learn how you can label these videos now to label let's say i want to label this video right over here what i can go ahead and do is right click on this video and go to label and we have all these different kinds of colors that we have let's go ahead and uh, label this one yellow let's label the next one to be a bright red oops there is no red let's go ahead and label it blue the next one let's label it uh, green and the final one let's label it rose I think that's a fancy name for the uh, pink color and we have all these different kinds of labels that we have right here so that is a very good way now if I import all these files in my timeline you can see that the uh, they have all these different colors and what this does is it helps you to work with your timeline it it helps uh, your workflow a lot because you know exactly which video you want to see we, I, if I want to edit this specific video that we have right over here I can just edit the specific video right over here and well that's about it that's about it and that's about how you can go ahead and uh, organize your footage now there are a bunch of ways and a bunch of different ways by which you can organize your files because Premiere Pro is such a vast software and most people use it what you can go ahead and do is on your own you can just uh, create your own organizing way well this was my way I go ahead and uh, label my video so that I have different kinds of videos and I visually know which video I want to edit well that's about it for this one guys I hope to see you in the next one in the next one I will explain all these different tools to you in Premiere Pro well that's about it for this one guys see you in that one bye bye Hey everyone, welcome back to the Premiere Pro course and for this section of the course, we are going to talk a little bit about the different tools in Premiere Pro. Now, uh, as you can see right over here, there are not a lot of tools that are being shown right there. But again, if you click and hold right here, you can see the different kinds of tools that we have. Now, these are tools that you will use a lot and these are tools that uh, will help you out in your workflow quite a bit. Now. Let's go ahead and talk about these different kinds of tools. So the first tool that we have right over here is the selection tool. Now, as the name suggests, the selection tools go uh, just goes ahead and selects everything that you want to. I can just click right over here and due to it being the selection tool, I can just select this clip right over here. I can select anything or I can click and drag over these clips and this will go ahead and select these clips right over here. Now. The next uh, tool that we have right over here is my track select forward and my track select backward tool. Now what this tool basically does is the shortcut to this tool by the way is A towards the forward one and uh, shift plus A towards the backward one. I'll tell you what this does is. Now let's say I have these three clips right over here. Let's go ahead and move this on top of my original layer. You can just click and drag and move this right over there and we have these clips right over here let's just move this one right there what this one does is if i press a on my keyboard i have my track select forward uh, tool that we have right here i can just click right over here and this will select everything in my uh, composition right over here i can just click on this track right over here and this has selected these two tracks i can just click on this uh, these two as well and click and drag and i can move all my selections just by that what you can also go ahead and do is if I hold shift, uh, let's just uh, deselect this by clicking anywhere except these uh, clips right over here. I can press shift and click on a single track. I can just press shift and let's say I want to select the blue one. I can just click on that one and that one will be selected right over there. Again, shift click and what I can go ahead and do is once I left, let go of my shift, I can go ahead and drag this one right over here. You can again go ahead and uh, select a specific clip and go ahead and drag this with your selection tool. But what the track selection uh, forward tool does is it helps you move everything to a forward position in your Premiere Pro uh, workflow that you have right over here. The next tool that we have is the ripple delete or ripple edit tool that we have right over here. Now to demonstrate this one, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and cut my footage in a few places. Now to cut this footage, I'm going to go ahead and press Ctrl K on my keyboard or Command K if you're on a Mac. 
and we have these two cuts in this uh, in this manner right over here. Now, if I select my ripple edit tool or by pressing B on my keyboard, what I can go ahead and do is first of all, I'll go ahead and zoom in. And let's say I want to move this end a little bit towards the left. But once I move this with my selection tool, it leaves this whole gap right over here. So what you can go ahead and do is use the ripple edit tool that we have. Press B on your keyboard and once I move it back, it moves my clips back with it. Again, I'll show you that right here. I can just edit this one out just about, let's say to this much, and this will move my cuts towards the left right over here. Let's say I want to increase this right over here or decrease this or rather. I can just go ahead and let go and this will uh, move my clips towards the left. Now again, click and drag and let it go. And this will move my clips uh, that are towards the right of my clip closer and this will close any gap between the clip that we have right over here. The next tool that we have is the rolling edit tool, the shortcut to which is N on your keyboard. Now what this will go ahead and do is let's say I have uh, this clip right over here. I can just click on this point that we have right here and I can click and drag and what this will go ahead and do is if I let go, it will move my frame right over here. Again, it's a little bit difficult to understand uh, with the same color of footage that we have right over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and just decrease the duration of this one like this. And let's delete these two files that we have right here. Let's go ahead and join these two and let's see what our uh, rolling edit tool does. Now, if I select my rolling edit tool, I can press N on my keyboard as a shortcut. What I can go ahead and do is let's say I click and drag it over right here. This will increase the size of my clip towards the left. And if I click and drag towards the left, it will increase the size of my clip towards the right, right over here. Now, this is very useful because let's say you want to uh, keep the duration of the timeline, the whole, and let's say it's a two camera interview. Then what you can go ahead and do is increase the time of one camera without actually disturbing the whole footage. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the next tool, which is my uh, rate stretch tool. Yes, I'm going to go ahead and delete these two right over here. And let's move right here. And I'm going to go ahead and import my file. This uh, clip number one right here. I'm going to increase the size by clicking and dragging. And I can go ahead and click on my rates uh, stretch tool that we have right over here by clicking and dragging and clicking on rate stretch tool. Now what this does is it basically speeds up or slows down your footage. Now you can just go ahead and you know slow down your footage by right clicking and going to these panels and figuring it out by clicking on speed and duration. But the best tool to do that is going to uh, use the rate stretch tool. If I go ahead and drag this out, you will see that there is this panel right over here, which means that it is 82.92% of the original speed. As you can see, it has been slowed down. If I move it forward right over here, you can see it's 265% of the original clip. Let's go ahead and hide these two clips that we have right over here. And as you can see, it has been sped up quite a lot. You can just go ahead and do this. And let's say I want my footage to be a minute 15 seconds. You can see that it's 97.5% of the original uh, video clip, the duration of the original video clip that we have right here. Now, this is very important if you are shooting any kind of B roll. And let's say you uh, want the B roll to be a little bit smo uh, smoother and you want to fill a certain gap, you can go ahead and stretch this out or stretch this uh, around to a, a smaller number. And this will help you out in going ahead and uh, you know, going ahead and not fiddling with the uh, speed and stretch tab that we have right here. What most people do and what most people make mistake uh, as a beginner is they don't use these tools. Premiere Pro has provided you amazing tools. So I just request you to go ahead and use these tools in all of your edits because most people what they do is they go ahead and fiddle with it in the speed and duration and they figure out the duration. Let's say I want it to be 30 seconds. They fiddle with it and they just try to do everything that they can. Oh, that's a little bit faster. But this one, by pressing R on your keyboard, you can just go ahead and increase it and increase the length of your video that you have right over here. Now, as you can see, this is a very slow video. It's 57%. So again, it's a very slow video at this point, but that is how you use this tool. 
The next tool that we have in our list is the razor tool, the shortcut tool, which is C. Now what the razor tool does is it basically chops your video anywhere you click. Let's say I want to chop it right over here till right here. I can just click on these two points right there and I can go ahead and chop up my clip in any time or any frame that I want. Now the next two tools are a little bit important, but before we start and uh, look at these tools, let's go ahead and talk about in and out points. Now I just simply imported these videos right over here, but let's say I want to import a specific part of a video that we have. So what we can go ahead and do with that is we can go ahead and put in and out points. Well, these points are basically start and end points in Premiere Pro. These are virtual start and end points in a video clip. That might be a little hard for you to understand. So what? let's go ahead and see. You can put in and out points in a video by pressing I or O on your keyboard. Now, you can go ahead and do that on this clip that we have right over here. This is my source panel. What I can go ahead and do is let's say I want my video clip to start from right here. I can press I on my keyboard and this has put in my input point. I stretch this video out right about here. And let's say I want the next clip to start from right there. I can press O on my keyboard and I can go ahead and click on this video right over here and drag it in my timeline. Now the next tool, which is the slip tool. What the slip tool will do is basically it will move these in and out points without you actually going to have to fiddle with these points. Now it's easier said than done. So let's go ahead and see how this tool works to get this tool. You want to press Y on your keyboard and whenever you roam or uh, hover over this and click and uh, drag, you will see that originally my time frame that uh, starting we are moving our time frame, but our whole selection is not being moved again. The duration of the clip remains the same, but we are moving the in and out points. If I move towards the left, we are increasing the input point a little bit and increasing the output point. But if I move towards the right, I'm decreasing that. So let's say originally, I think uh, let's keep it at original. So the original one is right over here at 14 seconds, about 14 seconds and 37 seconds. I can go ahead and move that to about 22 seconds to 27 seconds to 50 seconds and this will be done without actually going ahead and moving my clip right over here and that's just about it well the next thing that we have right over here is our uh, slide tool now what this slide tool does is it basically moves a clip on the timeline but keeps the in and out source at the same point again let's go ahead and see this the shortcut to this tool is you on your keyboard now we have the in and out points for this clip right over here. If I press U on my keyboard, we have our slide tool. I can just slide my uh, video footage right over here and this will not move my in and out points in any way. It will just move my footage towards the left or the right. And that is about it. The next tool is again, we have the pen tool. What the pen tool does is basically it, the pen tool is a very versatile tool. You can go ahead and work with the pen tool a lot. I will tell you a little bit about the pen tool in a future video because again, if you know how to use the pen tool in any Adobe software, you can do wonders. You can create animations. You can create beautiful things, mask out things. And it's a very important thing to know about the pen tool. I'm going to go ahead and reset it to the save layout and yeah, that's about it. And the next tool that we're going to go ahead and talk about is the hand tool. What the hand tool will do basically is help you move about in the timeline. It will help you move in this timeline right over here. And let's say you have a very big timeline. You can just choose the hand tool and move away in any way that you want. The next tool that we have right over here is the zoom tool. You can press Z on your keyboard and click and zoom in any point that you want. And that is about it. You can zoom in by that. You can also zoom in by using your scroll wheel. What you can go ahead and do with that one is press option on your windows on your Mac system or alt on your uh, window system and scrolling in zooms in and scrolling out zooms out. Again, if I press uh, alt with my zoom tool selected, this will also bring up the zoom out tool. Let's say I have zoomed in to about this much right here. I can press alt and click and this will zoom out everything how it should look like and that's about it well 
that's about it for the zoom tool guys the next tool is the text tool again you know the type tool or the text tool it will help you just to get some text on your canvas right here i can write borosh and this is my text tool uh, i'm sorry i had uh, i had disabled these layers but we have a text right over here and that's about it that's about all the different kinds of tools that are in premiere pro now as I told you about in this video, these tools will really help out your workflow in Premiere Pro because these tools, you might not use all of them all the time, but if you do use them and if you do know a little bit about them, these will help you out in your workflow a lot. I didn't certainly, I didn't know most of these tools. I just had to work with these handles right over here and I had to close these gaps by dragging this clip right here. But once you do know these uh, these tools, you can just go ahead and do wonders with Premiere Pro. Uh, and I am really glad to know these tools and I'm really happy that you know them now as well. Well, that's about it for this one, guys. And I hope you like this video. In the next video, we will learn a little bit about how you can go ahead and animate or go ahead and create a new sequence in Premiere Pro. We will work with the sequence editor. We will work with different kinds of projects in uh, one workspace. We will learn some differences. We will learn how you can create bins and clean up the different folders that we have right over here. Well, that's about it for this one, guys. See you in the next one. Bye bye. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this course. If you want to watch the rest of the course, the link is down below. Not only will you get the access to this course, but you'll get access to a lot of other courses in a huge bundle. And it's on sale today. So buy before the sale ends. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.